One way to make sure that Lean and Six Sigma succeed is by linking them to the overall corporate vision and goals. And one of the tools that's popular to do that is called the Balanced Scorecard. Uh, in the old days, we would have called that Hoshin Planning. And the goal here is really to translate that corporate vision into operational goals and measures, and then to link all of those goals and measures to individual unit goals and measures. And one of the four categories in here is about quality. And this will enable us to then learn from feedback and improve the system. So the balanced scorecard really focuses on four key things. Financial, which is actually an effect of doing everything else right. So you kind of have to get everything else right to make this get that, that outcome. And then there's the customer, and we want them to be satisfied, delighted, exactly, and quality. And we're going to use Lane and Six Sigma to drive internal process quality and performance, and then learning and growth. And so what we want to do is take that and translate that into something we can, we can track using uh, the tools of quality. Now, essentially, there's a number of different ways to go about this. But let's just start with the strategy map. <clears throat> so the way that this is, uh, came to be is kind of Kaplan and Norton kind of captured this concept back in the early 90s. And it's been, you know, kind of leveraged and used in a variety of ways. So the first or the fourth one down here is learning and growth. And the whole idea is that if we have a motivated, prepared workforce, that's going to make us uh, better at doing what we do. And then that's going to lead to our internal perspective, where we start to build the franchise and increase customer value. And then the quality tools come into operational excellence, being a good corporate citizen. These things then lead us into the customer perspective, where we start to provide what they want in terms of price and quality and time and functionality and service and relationships, uh, branding. And we're going to link operational intimacy, customer intimacy, and product leadership uh, in that kind of triangle of things that we want to improve. And then those things then enable us to get the revenue that improves shareholder value because we end up with new revenue sources, increasing customer value, increasing cost structure, and so on. So that's kind of the, the strategy behind this. Now there's a number of ways we can go about that. Uh, in the QI macros, under our planning tools, you'll actually find we have this balanced scorecard template, which I have open here. And the idea here is we can talk about what our various things are up here. And, you know, so here's our high level goals and objectives. And we can put in what are we going to do to make that happen. So those might be our themes from a high level. But how do we translate that then into something we can do something about? Well, one of the ways to do that is with a tree diagram. I'll shrink that down just a little bit. And here you can see what we want to do with the tree is say, here's our vision, whatever that might be. And we have these four big drivers or pillars, if you will, financial growth, customer, quality, learning and growth. And then what we want to do is translate those into uh, some sort of short-term objective and some way of measuring it. Well, from a financial growth perspective, we want to increase the number of customers. So we can count the number of customers and have a target for increase. We want to increase our order size, so our average sale might be a way of measuring that. And we want to say, what are, how are we going to increase that? You know, and so if you think about uh, fast food places, you know, uh, can you supersize me on that? Well, that's how we increase the average sale. All right, so increasing the frequency of sale or finding new revenue, right? So some new way to create some new product revenue that will increase uh, profitability. Then we can look at the customer. Well, we want to increase customer satisfaction. We can measure that with surveys and so on. Uh, we can increase referrals. So we'd like to get more people referring and we can get the referral rate and measure that. And again, increase frequency of sale. And so that's going to tell us, you know, the customer's happier because they're buying more often. Now, from a quality perspective, there's three things customers want. They want us to be better, faster, and cheaper. And so on the better side, we want to reduce cycle time. We can measure that and the percent reduction. So instead of increasing something, here we're going to be reducing cycle time.
Defects, we're going to reduce them in parts per million. And that's a six sigma thing. We want to reduce them in parts per million. And reducing cost. And so if we have less waste and rework, then we're going to have uh, you know, a significantly improved quality. And from a learning and growth perspective, we want to be increasing our core skills. That may involve training. Uh, systems availability. Well, usually, you know, IT systems, you only get upset when they're unavailable. So we want to focus on the unavailable side because it's usually, you know, less than 5% of the time they're down. But that's what we want to fix. Because if we don't have the systems, our people can't do their job. So we want to reduce system unavailability. This is also a form of quality problem if our systems aren't available. So we can do it that way. We could also come in and use just a simple Excel spreadsheet to link all these things. So satisfy shareholders using the same tools and measures and targets. And we can put in what our initiatives are going to be and what our results are going to be. The other thing we could do is start to link all of these across uh, target groups, if you will. So for example, I'm going to go back here to home and grab a, the one tool that I need to be able to do this called Select Objects. They kind of hid that in Excel 2010. So let's say I'm in a uh, department and what I want to do is link mine to these goals. Well what I'm going to do is grab all of this and then I can click on that and choose Copy. And then I can click over here and choose paste and then what I want to do is grab that and move it over so that I'm in the right place here and then I can connect these to the uh, to the previous uh, item here and what I want to do now is start to link my targets across to the what's going on at the corporate level that makes sense. There we go. All right. So now, um, yeah, we want to increase customers, but what if I'm an internal uh, or group, right? Well, maybe I don't want to increase my customers. So maybe what I want to do is go back to uh, it's an internal thing. So they may be trying to increase customers, but maybe I want to increase uh, capacity or something like that, so that number of, of widgets that I can I can produce per hour increases so that I can you know meet the increased demands and again this may help me with increasing order size uh, increasing frequency of sale and then I may want to innovate and so uh, new products might be my my way of creating new product revenue and so all of these things may actually be a form of increasing capacity all right so that might be how I link my stuff, my department, to the overall goals. And so the balance scorecard can assist us in figuring these things out and linking all of these things together. And you'll find there's instructions in here and different ways to go about using all of these things. Uh, there is some interest out there in using some sort of a heat map, but heat maps tend to focus you just on monthly things and sometimes you know if something's in the red we overreact and that leads to what Deming calls tampering so we end up tampering with what our uh, with what our customers really want and being able to deliver consistent value so that's the balance scorecard pretty simple pretty straightforward and if you have questions about it you know email us be a money belt